going on, folks? Kev here, and uh, on this week's episode, I'm doing something a little different. Um, on a daily basis, I get questions, mostly on Instagram, but sometimes on uh, YouTube as well. And uh, the two most popular ones that I'm running into, I'm going to address here because it's easier for me to uh, make a video about it. Hopefully, a short video. I don't want to bore you guys too much, but. Uh, Number one is, is your cast iron vegan friendly? Do you use any animal products in the uh, restoration process or in the seasoning process? Uh, so we're gonna go over that. And uh, two is cast iron safe uh, as far as chemicals or uh, is there lead in it? You know, there's a lot of like concern with that. So. I'm going to uh, address both of those by taking you through the whole process of what I do personally. But keep in mind, people do their own, you know, things. Sometimes it's uh, different processes, so you just have to uh, ask and find out. But I'm going to address what I do. First of all, I go get them. You folks know that. I go get them at garage sales, yard sales, uh, flea markets, however I can source them. And uh, they're rusty, crusty, and uh, first thing I do is I put it into a food grade lye bath. And uh, lye is a, it's a natural chemical and it doesn't stick to your uh, uh, pan forever. It's water soluble. And it takes away all the black or brown carbon buildup. And that's, uh, that's the first process. Second process is I use vinegar. I use like a 50-50 vinegar and water mix to address the rust. So I'll put the piece in about a half hour, 40 minutes at a time. You don't want to do too much more because then it'll uh, affect the uh, cooking surface and all the surfaces really. It'll etch it and make the seasoning harder to stick to. So then after that, I will dry it and decide where it's going. Now on Etsy, I offer uh, non-seasoned pieces because uh, that's the way it used to come. And my, my original goal was to provide everybody with a uh, an experience of going back in time and shopping for, uh, you know, cast iron in a, a hardware store or a department store in 1950, you know, like, so it used to come and they would call it pre-season. So it'd have like a, a layer of oil on it and then you take it home and you just uh, season it with whatever mom had by the oven. It could be like lard or bacon grease, whatever. So I, I do... About 75% of my Etsy pieces just have this. Flaxseed oil. Now, according to their website, vegan friendly, I just put a light coat on it and then you buy it from me, you take it home and you season it with whatever you want. That's, uh, you know, that's up to you. And then, uh, for in real life shows and for some on Etsy, you have to look because you can see it'll be visibly darker. I'll use one of these fine products that I don't cook with, but these make a really good, really good base layer of seasoning. So I'll use these and according to the websites, they are vegan friendly and no animal products or you know any of that so just you know i'm here to guide you and help as many people as i can but do your own research that's just what i do you have to figure out what uh other people do that you're buying from also from my buddy cast iron chris people make uh their own compounds and they're really good and uh I would use them, but uh, it would, I think it would cost me too much money because I do so many pans, so many pieces per month. So I don't, but you have to read the, read the instructions, read the uh, ingredients because uh, 
a lot of the new ones they have beeswax in them so and there's a it's like a split like I don't know too much about being a vegan I'm an omnivore I eat whatever is in front of me um, but a lot of that has beeswax in it and half the vegans are think beeswax you know honey or bees products are fine and the other half are like no it's an animal and so you have to you have to decide yourself that's basically uh, basically it but um to address the uh, the chemicals like they don't stick like uh, the, the argument is oh cast iron's porous and it'll just get in the pores and the definition of porous is basically like little crevices that water and air could pass through so if I put you know water in cast iron it's not gonna go through it but on a molecular level like I have this it's nice and smooth this is one of my daily users unmarked Wagner but even on a molecular level there's crevasses okay so it'll you know the seasoning will stick to that and uh, make it smooth and, and help it become non-stick but now as far as uh, lead is concerned like um, I don't think lead is part of the process some people say oh all well, the stuff that's imported has lead in it and you know m maybe their standards of uh, what they mix into their iron is a little different than from the US but the, the few pieces that I restore are Japan, Taiwan, uh, Korea even and they'll be from the 60s and 70s and they're well made like they're smooth they're fairly light like uh, so I, I don't think and uh, I use a lead test you can get your own I suggest you get the uh, 3M lead test. It costs a little bit more money, but uh, if you go for the cheaper ones on Amazon, they'll uh, uh, they give you false positives. Like, geez, like at least I don't know, 40% of the time, people get false positives and they get worried. And so you buy the 3M ones if it makes you feel better and use it. You can keep using it until you get a positive. So you keep using the same one. Um, I've been doing this for a decade and I don't I think I ran into one piece that had lead in it that was used for smelting lead and it was this not this not this exact piece but uh, it was one of these and right off the bat physically you can see there was like a shiny silvery grayish residue and then tested it and it was positive and I destroyed it because you can't clean lead out all the way it'll be forever unclean so that's uh that's something you can't undo so if you run into a, a lead positive just get rid of it or paint it do an art project whatever you want as far as the uh, restoration processes there's basically a handful that are uh, pro approved it'll be uh, like what I explained the lye vinegar um, evaporust is safe and vegan friendly as well um, electrolysis tank is really good it's takes off everything um, if you search on YouTube for restoring like a lot of times people will show you like uh, sanding or grinding and that's sort of frowned upon because uh, all those things or they throw it in a fire my, my grandparents used to throw it in a fire overnight and that's just you know technically that stuff works but uh, like the, the grinding again with the bumps sanding it'll smooth it out too much believe it or not and it'll make seasoning harder to stick or later down the road you'll get like bald spots and uh i mean why bother i mean but my grandfather used to okay that's great you know what else your grandparents did they went out in the yard took a crap in a hole in the ground okay like 
does it still work? Yes, but there's slightly more modern, easier, convenient ways to do things like a toilet or like one of the safe ways to restore stuff. So you have to find a, uh, find a professional if you don't feel like doing it yourself. It's usually not that much money and there's not a lot of us, but we're around. Just do some research. Um, anyways, I, I hope this covered everything that you, you know, uh, were asking me. It's easier for me to do this in a video instead of reply to, you know, millions of emails because of all my huge following. But um, any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll help out as best I can. As always, this is Cast Iron Kev, and I think we could all do better. Mm -hmm.